I didn't prepare any slides, but um, I'm going through uh, the process um, of how we do point releases um, from a user's perspective, but also from the release team's perspective. Um, uh, so first, I want to uh, have a look at um, well the announcements uh, users get when something uh, when a point release has happened. Um, so this is a the last example, um, the latest point release. Um, so on Debian announce, um, there is a, a mail sent by um, the uh, the press team. Um, and they uh, explain what has changed and um, what the point release is about. Um, so as you can see, um, the update uh, mainly adds uh, corrections for security problems um, and some serious problems. I, I come back to that later, but um, so it clearly states that um, it's still stable. It's not that um, uh, there are uh, features changed or something like that. It's uh, just to make sure that uh, the system stays secure and uh, that uh, uh, packages can still be installed and things like that. So if we have a look at um, what changed, um, there are a, a couple of categories. Um, so first, the, the non-security fixes. Um, and then you can see that even, even if they are not uh, mentioned uh, at the security fixes, there are no um, uh, Debian security advisories for it. There are still security fixes that get applied and uh, accepted in stable uh, through uh, a point release. And the reason is actually very simple. It's that um, the security team thinks that the fixes for these are not um, important enough uh, or not critical enough um, to include in the security archive. Um, the reason they prioritize that in that way is um, that they are kind of understaffed to uh, make sure all the security fixes um, uh, get handled with. And uh, especially when uh, fixes are not that critical, um, they advise maintainers to contact the release team to have a look if it can still be included in, point, in the point release. If you look at the second one with uh, the ASCII doc, uh, I hope everyone can read it by the way, I don't know. Um, so there is stated replace, uh, replace FOP with uh, DB LaTeX. And this is actually an example of something um, where um, the functionality of the package um, was uh, just broken um, and cha by changing um, the dependencies, um, the functionality was restored. <laughs> As you also can see uh, over here, there are uh, many uh, packages that were rebuilt against the latest kernel. Um, that means that there was uh, a security fix or a really serious fix in the kernel um, uh, which, uh, of course, needed other packages to adjust um, by rebuilding or sometimes even by uh, slightly patching. Um, you can see over here uh, Linux 2.6, several fixes. Um, that doesn't say much, of course, but um, the things that get fixed in the kernel are mainly um, regressions or um, smaller security fixes. Uh, another thing that um, 
got changed quite recently is that um, we now, for every point release, uh, make sure that uh, Debian version in ETC uh, is updated accordingly so that uh, users know um, which point release they're on and that it's also easier to see um, if something breaks um, in what uh, point release um, uh, did break their system. Another important uh, part um, of point releases is when we fix something in the Debian installer. Um, um, there are various reasons to update the Debian installer, but um, as you can see um, here, um, some of the things are not always um, clear from the description, but um, there were some issues in the installer um, that um, you couldn't read all the text that was displayed, things like that. Um, for instance, the also uh, what we fixed in, the, in another point release was um, that you could install alt stable with uh, uh, with the stable, and then you have uh, the security updates. And as you can see, they are um, ordered by um, Debian uh, security advisory number, uh, so that you can easily um, find them back on uh, on the web. Um, to see what the details are about the security issue. So when you follow the security link, you can then go to the list of DSAs and click on the issue to see and stuff like that. And then, of course, the usual um, uh, end of the email uh, where there is an explanation about what Debian is about because people are subscribed to Debian Announce but there are not many messages so uh, when people get a message on Debian Announce it's really useful uh, to tell them or to remind them what Debian is about. And then of course um, maybe one of the most important things here and that if there are issues that you can mail uh, the release team. Then if you go uh, to the developers view, um, so if you think there is something that should go into stable, uh, uh, we use the proposed updates. Uh, proposed updates is a mechanism uh, to make sure that um, when you upload the package um, it gets reviewed by the release team uh, and when we accept it it, uh, it arrives in uh, the proposed update suite um, so it can be tested before it actually enters in uh, with when we do the point release in stable. So um, over here you can see um, how you can add uh, a line in the sources.list uh, to really use the proposed updates. So to test the updates we are planning to include in uh, the point release. And then uh, at the end of the page you can also see that um, uh, how you should um, do uh, an update to proposed updates so um, that um, the guidelines are that uh, the bugs you fix uh, should be f uh, filed in the bug tracking system and the reason is uh, simply because if they're filed in the bug tracking system it's easy for us to find them back but also easy for um, users if um, we make a description of the change and we include the bug number that 
they can see uh, the the real details about the issue. Um, then we also like that um, the the patch for the the bug fix is tested uh, first within unstable, um, so that um, there are no um, surprises uh, in proposed updates nor in uh, the real point release. And then there are some guidelines about uh, what kind of issues uh, we fix in point releases. Um, so definitely security issues, and that can of course be um, through the security team and the security archive, because all um, all uploads that end up in the security archive, um, well, on the security mirrors, they are pushed through to uh, proposed updates, so uh, they get also included in a point release. Of course, not all of the security issues, like I said before, um, go through uh, the security team. If in doubt, um, if in doubt, please contact the security team and they will advise you to either upload to the security archive or to contact the, the release team uh, to have a look if it's uh, okay to upload to uh, proposed updates. Then of course, critical bugs. Um, critical bugs is of course release critical bugs, but that can also be um, bugs that uh, actually are not reported as release critical, but that are um, experienced by users or by the maintainer as really critical. Oh, you're there again. <laughs> and then of course, uninstallability and uh, fail to build from source bugs these are release critical bugs, but they are not always perceived as uh, critical uh, by a user or by a maintainer, especially if it's on a particular architecture. And uh, so there is also, um, when um, something is released and we find out that it's actually uh, also uh, able to build on more architectures is also useful on these architectures. Uh, we try to bring the architectures back in sync and make sure that um, the packages uh, are available on all the usable architectures. Um, and so the, the way to um, the process actually for the developer uh, is to first uh, have the bugs filed in the BTS to find a patch for the bugs. Um, so, of course, the bug filing can happen by a user or someone else. The patch uh, can also be by someone else. But we like the maintainer, uh, preferably the maintainer, to file uh, the patch to the release list. Um, preferably the maintainer because we really want uh, the maintainer to feel responsible for the patch and of course for um, the resulting package in stable. Um, the reason we ask um, to still send um, a mail to release is uh, to make sure that we can always trace back um, when something changed, what the change was about um, and um, so even if something goes wrong uh, with the with, uh, archive server or something like that, uh, we are easily uh, able uh, to uh, go back to the state we were before. Um, and of course, um, sometimes we reject uh, things um, that because they are not fit for stable. But that doesn't mean that they are not fit for, for instance, a volatile or backport. Um, but of course, this one is about point releases. Um, in two days, uh, I'll probably uh, give the 
uh, the both about um, cooperating better between uh, stable, volatile, and backports, and getting some common policy to to know um, in what archive fixes should um, reside and things like that. So now we have the user perspective. They they get uh, an announcement that things got changed. Um, they might or might not already have the security updates installed. Then we have the developer's perspective that, um, well, you have the, um, the fixes ready uh, to be included in, uh, in stable or um, you're trying to, to reach that goal. And then we have um, the release point of view. Um, so we have um, an overview pages of um, what technically is missing um, before we can do a point release. Um, first, there are some to-do items um, that are things that, um, well, are not really package related. Um, so, for instance, uh, Decruft. Um, Decruft is making sure that uh, old binaries that are not um, not used anymore in the archive, well, not um, not pointed at by packages files and things like that, uh, that they can um, that they are removed. Um, we still have an issue on um, IA64 that the package uh, is not been built there. It's it is of course package related, but it's not um, related to an upload already um, to proposed updates because it's the the existing package in stable that's not getting built on that architecture. And then we currently have uh, an issue in stable um, that the task overrides um, are wrong because um, some scripts um, used um, still uh, Lenny sit instead of squeeze sit. So it changed the Lenny one and where it had to change the squeeze one. Then we have the removals, so that are packages that the maintainer thinks uh, that are not worthy to be included in the release anymore. Um, and we keep track of them because, of course, uh, we have to tell the uh, FTP masters to remove them at point release time. Because there is not a single uh, change in stable uh, between point releases. Every change happens at point release time. A removal, an addition, or an update all happens at, at point release time. And then we have uh, an overview of uh, the packages. Um, so this page is uh, really useful for the release team, but of course also for maintainers to know uh, in what stage of uh, the decision process and uh, of um, yeah, well, the decision process, the packages. Um, is it already in proposed updates, or is it still waiting on a review, or is it waiting for something else? Um, the resolution pending ones are, of course, not yet in proposed updates. Um, if you see that it's green, strange green there, but um, if it's green, um, it means that. We are the release team is okay with uh, the update, but for some reason we didn't accept it yet in proposed update. Um, for Apache 2, that's uh, because um, Apache 2 npm itk has to be rebuilt at the same time, so has to be available on all the architectures first, and it's still missing the S391. So yellow is clearly that it's not yet ready um, um, to enter proposed updates.
and you can see that some others are also missing um, built some some architectures and then you have um, Borowski um, where you see it's still blank still blank means that uh, we didn't really review it yet we didn't um, make a decision yet if it's okay to be accepted in proposed updates or if we should reject it so it's still outstanding there are some others and um, then you have the uh, pending processing here um, the pending processing um, currently zero upload that are the ones that we accepted um, but are still um, not in proposed updates because the install didn't happen yet and then um, we have the processed ones um, and of course that will be many accepted ones you can see with some of the accepted ones that there is still an issue with uh, the version um, that the version in uh, proposed updates is uh, bigger than the one in testing um, we try to avoid that as much as possible but um, if it's not fixed before the point release that means that uh, the version that is in proposed updates will propagate to testing and unstable and if you see um, a yellow one uh, that means that either um, it's not a security update and it is accepted and then it only gets auto built when it's already in proposed updates because when you have a security update it has to be built on all architectures on the security archive before um, it can be uh, accepted um, in, in proposed updates because otherwise you can have that it gets built on two different locations and uh, then you get um, different binaries and that gives problems but the yellow ones normally are uh, ones that are not built yet on all architectures and then you can see the red ones that are the ones that got rejected uh, I should also notice that um, whenever we accept or reject the package uh, we of course uh, send a reply to the mail that was sent to us on the release list and as you can see most of it got accepted um, so that's a quick overview of um, uh, a point release um, from every perspective uh, the well the point the release perspective is of course uh, only highlighting the technical aspect because we also have the social aspects that uh, for a point release to happen we have to make sure that everyone that's uh, involved in uh, having a point release is present and um, does his part of the job like the press team uh, is available to send the announcement the archive team is present um, to uh, make the necessary archive changes um, you have um, for instance the CD builders are ready to build the CDs when the archive is ready the mirror team is ready to make sure that um, everything um, will end will end up in the mirrors when the archive is ready and things like that so that's coordinating it's of course also coordinating with uh, translators to get the announcement translated um, coordinating um, with uh, the maintainer for instance of base files to make sure the the file debian version is changed things like that Um, 
but at this point I actually uh, wanted to ask uh, the audience if um, if you think there are uh, things in the process that can be improved Um, actually, I would really like to see more testing of proposed updates because, oh, well, something also to gather test results uh, mainly for the stuff that's not a security update because we currently don't know how many people are using proposed updates and it's only moved into stable at point release time and not tested somewhere else and it would really help to get some feedback on that. Uh, the change should probably be tested and unstable already, of course. But. In, re in reply to that, I talked to the FTP master during my time being stable release manager, having proposed updates uh, being a full suit instead of um, um, a partial suit. Um, which would only uh, actually affect the packages file um, being a little bit larger, but that would be all what's needed from the release point, uh, release team point of view to get better testing from uh, from proposed updates. But that hadn't, uh, th that wasn't implemented yet. Yeah, the reason being that you don't have to specify stable and proposed updates to test proposed updates. Sorry? Yeah, you can also remove packages already, true. And test CDs and... <laughs> and DI. Okay, but... Uh, oops. Uh, a sensible improvement already without making proposed updates a full suit would be uh, clearly communicating to users that, uh, well, perhaps that's been done already, but that proposed updates is not now like it used to be in the past that could get uh, random shit, like now what enters proposed update proper has been reviewed uh, by a member of the release team and uh, so it should be safer to, to enable it if it's not a mission critical a system because the the review process is similar to what happens during the freezing in testing. So I don't know what could be done or if we want to do it to ask our users or perhaps our brave users to to enable uh, proposed updates in their systems. I yes. have no idea if that's something we want to do or not. Well, I don't think we want to do that by default because. Of course, some users only want, really want to use stable and decide themselves if they want to upgrade. But, but of course, um, it's already mentioned in the release notes that um, um, if they want to test um, the proposed updates, they should add uh, the line in their source dot list. Um, the problem with that, though, is that you still can get problems mm -hmm. like this overrides thing breaking and the first possible point that that could have been noticed was when Sledge built the CDs for the stable release update. I think by that point, you've already basically pushed it out. So if you want to be able to catch this kind of breakage in the future, you really need to have the ability to build test CD images and things like that. Yeah, true. On the other hand, um, the CD building scripts and DI stuff, could also um, be extended to have proposed updates as an option. And that still doesn't cover the case of removals and such. I think there really is a fairly strong argument for trying uh, to have proposed updates appear as a complete suite. It yeah, just, sure, it, it, sure. It, yeah, you know. There are ways you could work around various of the other problems that are being discussed, but they all have some corner case that wouldn't be caught. Indeed. Making proposed updates full suite uh, 
would uh, solve a lot of issues. True. <laughs> Are there any other proposals making the process more lightweight or whatever? No one? Um, then I uh, actually wanted to already have uh, some uh, preview of um, the and a half releases because and a half releases are actually point releases um, that normally only happen like once or none at all during a release cycle um, where we introduce um, new packages uh, to uh, to make sure uh, we can uh, the release can be installed on on new hardware. Uh, so that mainly uh, means uh, up, uh, updating the kernel. So having a new source package of the kernel um, that you can install next to or instead of uh, the current kernel in stable. But of course, it also means things like um, the XORG drivers, and uh, so to uh, make it possible um, to install your system um, with new graphic chipsets and things like that. Um, everyone keeps me asking, will we do it again? Because last time with um, HN and a half. Um, it was uh, meant to be an experiment. It was the first time we did it. I think um, the feedback I got from uh, HN and a half um, was mainly positive. Um, actually, almost everyone uh, was really happy that we did it. Um, one uh, comment I uh, get uh, quite a lot uh, is that um, while we upgraded the kernel, well upgraded, we made it sure that you could use a newer kernel. We didn't make sure that you could uh, use the newer kernel with all kinds of modules. Um, so maybe that's something um, to look at for if we would try it again. Um, and I also wanted to ask the audience um, if they think um, HN half was a good idea and um, if they think we really should uh, do a Lenny and a half. Um, yes, blatantly. Um, I mean, I was bitten as well by random hardware that wouldn't work with the old, with the initial etch release. If anything, I'd, hap I'd happily be pushing for a Lenny and a third, Lenny and two thirds, but I know there's a lot of work involved. Um, the only problem that I really saw with, with the etch and a half was the fact that it took so long to get it out. Um, we really desperately need volunteers to help. Because I know um, there was work from quite a few of the teams, but when I saw that unless Dan was pushing prodding people, nothing really happened. Um, I mean, that might be an unfair view of things, but it was definitely the view I had. Well, it's definitely true. If you do uh, such kinds of uh, and a half release, um, you need more uh, people to really uh, care about doing it. Because um, last time around, uh, like you said, it was kind of only the release team and um, Dan Frazier uh, that really um, looked into making sure uh, it happened. Um, I think definitely uh, the maintainers of packages um, that support new hardware um, should come to us um, um, in advance so we know um, which packages we need to look into and uh, where we already can um, uh, prepare um, for having them in a point release. What I would like what I would like to see for Lenny and a half is the possibility to 
install Lenny onto a uh, storage area network because the current kernel uh, and I think also the current uh, bootloader doesn't support that. Doesn't support what? Installing Lenny into a, a st uh, the, uh, the whole f uh, the whole system into a storage area network. Ah, okay. And who will make that happen? So the main issue is the grub. Okay. <laughs> well, if it's just a two-line patch, it I think it could just be added in the point release if it's non-intrusive. Yes, indeed. It doesn't need a half release. Um, I looked at the popcorn data uh, for Edge and a half sh shortly. I hope I didn't make grave mistakes while looking at it. And the peak for I386 was at 360 users and for AMD64, 200. And you see a dropping, of course, after the Lenny release, so it's mainly used to bridge until Lenny's available. But there are still, according to Popcorn, uh, 270 users on the main architectures. Of course, there are still some binary, because it's organized by binary package, that use some other architectures, but the counters I saw were all pretty small, which means 10 or lower. And I think the question is um, what hardware we need to support for Lenny and a half. If we really need, if it's urgent to support new graphic drivers, if we need to support like wireless drivers which are outdated in Lenny, and how quick Squeeze is coming. True. Well, I'm not going to say anything about Squeeze now. So. Any other comments about uh, and a half release? One of the reasons um, uh, we only did a po uh, and a half release after more than a year uh, after the normal release is uh, security support. Because of course, if um, we want security support for the normal release and the and a half release, that means you have more kernels to support in the security team. So probably we should make um, make sure that um, the and a half release, if it comes, that um, uh, we have uh, security support. And probably that means making sure that there is more uh, people working on security support for that. Actually, I think that uh, looking at, well, we, we are definitely not going to do half year release cycles anyways. Uh, that wouldn't also match our, in our audience. And we have already a lot of new shiny things that are not really supported by kernel. So yes, I would definitely go for a plus half release if we could do. If we could do means if we have the manpower to do it. Um, and yeah, well, if some uh, hardware options can't be supported, I, can't, I can't remember we discussed about that last time in Edinburgh quite much. We said, well, we can live with that we don't support any hardware, uh, no, or so we, no, we don't need to support all hardware again. The plus half of these, we just need to document it properly. I think that is still very valid. Yes, true. Uh, it's not that both kernels have to support all the hardware. Um, we really want to have most hardware supported uh, by the new kernel but of course if the old kernel still supports more hardware there is no reason uh, for people in that case to upgrade to the newer kernel Does um, someone still have uh, any comment or question about point releases in general or the and a half release? Um, well, testing, again, in general. Um, 
the weekend we do a full release, we have people um, volunteering from all over the place to do CD and DVD testing. By the time we get to a point oh one or even worse, a point oh two, there's nobody around. Um, regular volunteers really would be good. If anyone wants to help, please be around, watch the release list, and dive in. Um, there's always shit for people to do. Yeah. I need to proxy Dan Fraser from IRC um, that it's always possible to add, or theoretically possible to add hardware support in regular point releases, and it doesn't need always an, a plus half release. It depends, of course, on the effort to backport a driver, but, well, it's also something to be considered. Yeah, definitely. I think it would be a good idea to uh, have more uh, point releases where we introduce uh, new hardware support if it doesn't uh, affect the current systems. Any other one, comments, question? No? Then we have a larger uh, break for coffee or something, I guess.